You're not getting anywhere with this Von Borschert. You know, I kind of get the same feeling, my dear Sarah. Listen. Nothing. Not a sound. No one's coming to save you. Huh. That's what you think. The Golden Order knows exactly where we are. <laughs> By the time your ridiculous secret society turns up, I'll be long gone. As for you, nothing will remain of your body. If you touch a single hair of my mother's head, I'll skin you alive. You know, Louis, I have no intention of beating your dear mother. There are more persuasive ways of making you talk. You've stolen something from me that I intend to get back. Where have you hidden it? Von Borschert, you can't sell that book on the black market anymore. This is finished. We know you're planning on selling at one of Lord Mortimer's parties. All right? Just tell us who the buyer is and we can make a deal. You've no idea of the trouble you've gotten yourselves into. Oh, but you will tell me where it's hidden. I can promise you that. Oh, stop annoying our host, Louis. Son, didn't what happened to you in Rome teach you anything? Just a few more minutes and my concoction will be ready. With this, your bodies will dissolve in less than four hours. You'll see. It loosens tongues in no time. You know, I have to admit, Mother, the only thing you've ever taught me is that damn motto of yours. Always remain rational and open. I got it. I've opened our shackles. Draw him over here. I'll take care of him. Von Borchard. Von Borchard. Hmm? Listen. Let's make a deal. I'll tell you where the book is if you let my mother go free. Oh, what are you playing at? Don't worry, mother. You want to play the hero. Pity you're not in any position to do so. For the last time. Where is Alazif? Let me do this. Trust me. Please, be my guest, Mother. Well done, Louis. You reacted perfectly. How do you feel, Mother? Couldn't be better. He's alive, so I can question him after we get back. Pity he's just a middleman. Hmm. Means I haven't finished with this case. Oh, I had a feeling you'd be running off on one of your adventures again, Mother. You know what? I'm warning you. This time, I'm coming with you. No. Even though you impress me more and more, I have to do this on my own. Mother, you're no spring chicken anymore. Come on, let's go home. And don't forget to send our men to tend to Von Borschert.
Well done, Mother. You just had to put that Bob Burchard's trail on your own, didn't you? You ditch me in Paris with no explanation, and off you go to infiltrate one of the world-renowned receptions of this Lord Mortimer? And now he writes me to say that you've gone missing on his private island? Which, by the way, looks more like a big rock than a paradise island. The least he could do is explain to me how he managed to lose you. In any case, it is time for you to stop all this, Mother. It no longer suits your age. Well, I'm sure I'll find you once again, slogging through the caves beneath the island, searching for some long-lost mystical object that you just can't live without. I'm already hating this trip, and all I've done is think about it. Contrary to what one may be able to imagine, it was not the host himself who invited me. Well now, Duchess, we find ourselves both invited by Sir Holm. Well, how very amusing. Perhaps we have some common interests, Your Eminence. Is this your first time at one of Lord Mortimer's legendary parties? Oh, no. We have been friends since long ago. But as I'm doing some business with Sir Holm, the invitation came from him. Well, I simply can't wait for all the festivities to begin. And you, good sir, what brings you here? Lord Mortimer asked me to join him. We have some business to take care of. Oh, how mysterious. You adapt quickly, my son. You get along here like a fish in water. Would you believe that we are all here hoping to solve our personal issues? You'll see. Right. I doubt that you came here to look for your mother, your eminence. Anyway, consider yourself fortunate, young man, because there are many who dream of simply one day setting foot on this island. And only a very few ever make it. Indeed, I imagine this must be your first time here. <laughs> That's right. Until now, I've never been invited by Lord Mortimer. You'll see. You won't soon forget it. Given what I've seen so far, I wish I'd been passed over. Come, Duchess. They are waiting for us. We're moving, Monsieur de Richet, if you would like to join us. I'm coming, Duchess. A cardinal? A duchess? I wonder if all the guests here are this prestigious. If I'd known, I, I would have gone for a better suit. Are you alright? Okay, it's done. Did you put it in a safe place? Yes. I made sure no one was following me. Don't worry, Sarah. No one's going to find it. Are you absolutely sure? Yes, I'm sure. Right. Just one thing left to do. No, Mother! No! Don't! Don't! What? Have you lost your mind? There is no other way. If you... if you kill me, you won't find it. That is the point, my dear. No one must ever put their hands on it again. No. But... I trusted you. No, Sarah. Don't! No. No! <gasps> you can run if you want to, Sarah. But you will pay for it. You. Uh, Louis, are you all right? What's going on? Here, take this. I'm sorry. Keep it. Are you better? I'm fine. Don't worry. It's getting late. Why don't why don't you go on ahead and I'll catch up with you, okay? Are you sure? Yes. I'm I'm sorry. I'm sure, yes. Fine. I 
I definitely have to find Mother quickly. Am I going crazy or, or what? This can't be real. The, the Duchess arrived with me. What's happening to me, for God's sake? I absolutely need to find you, Mother. Louis, during the trip, I had something I wanted to ask you, but we didn't happen to run into each other. Yes, Duchess? I'm not sure if you remember, but we've met before. At that time, you were of two minds as to your choice of career. Tell me, what have you been up to since? I have been involved in all sorts of unsolved cases. Have you ever heard of the Abbey of Hexham? Uh, vaguely. An ingenious scam involving mass manipulation on a scale never seen before. Hmm. There was a cavern under the Abbey, wasn't there? Exactly. The wind would blow in through spouts, creating a, a terrifying howling sound. So, to stop the howling, the priests called for offerings from the peasants. And if they brought enough money, I'm guessing the priest stopped the howling. A perfect trick to fool simple souls. Admit it, Duchess. That story kept you in suspense, didn't it? Yes, it did. I'm delighted to find out that you were the young and brilliant French investigator. For someone who only remembers the case vaguely, your memories are very clear. Well, they say I have the memory of two people. But please, call me Emily. Fine, Emily. Tell me, I was actually helped on that case by my mother. You wouldn't know her by any chance. Wait, Louis. We've already met. You do remember me, don't you? Please excuse me, madam. I'm sure we've met before, but I don't remember where. Hmm. I appreciate your honesty, even if it's not very flattering for me. I imagine that with your beauty, madam, it's the first time a man hasn't remembered your face. Well, I must say, you make up for yourself rather elegantly. Please, stop torching me. I'm completely at your mercy. Where have we met? Four years ago, in London? No. Sorry, I, I don't remember. In the office of William Pitt. Remember? No? I'm so sorry, Emily, but I really don't remember you. Let's drop it, Louis. It doesn't matter. Right, time to go to the manor.
I ask her a question, she answers with another. Is she playing with me? Emily, please excuse my insisting, but you still haven't answered about my mother. Do you know her? You'll see, Louis. Everybody here knows Sarah de Richet. I don't know where we're going like this, Emily, but you're connected to my mother one way or another. And if I can believe my vision, you don't have much of a place in her heart. Good evening, sir. May I ask your name, please? Louis Moras de Richet. Monsieur de Richet. Delighted to welcome you among us, sir. You must be Sarah de Richet's son. I must tell you we are doing our utmost to find your mother as quickly as possible. I have an appointment with Lord Mortimer. Would you be so kind as to lead me to him? Unfortunately, sir, I cannot. I don't know exactly where my master is. But rest assured, sir, everyone is waiting for you at the manor. Sir Holm insists on welcoming you in person. Since your mother went missing, everyone has been concerned about finding her. Who is Sir Holm? A close friend of Lord Mortimer's. Please, rest assured, sir, it won't take us long to find your revered mother. Indeed, we are searching the Ks again because lights were seen at the wharf just last night. Where we are now? Indeed, sir. According to our information, lights were seen in the middle of the night, sir. After verification, none of the guests seem to have left the manor last night. We think that perhaps Sir's mother was here. Did anyone see anything else? Unfortunately not, sir. Only lights were seen by servants of the manor, sir. And as I was saying, sir, all the guests were asleep, and no one seems to have noticed anything at all. We seem to have found an object that would appear to belong to Sir's mother. A handkerchief. The handkerchief is embroidered with the initials S.D.R. We came to the conclusion that they are the initials of Sir's mother, Sarah de Richet. I have orders to give it to Lord Mortimer as soon as I see him. I know my mother. She's not the kind to go for a midnight stroll in the wharf for nothing. I've got to find out what the hell she was doing here. Where exactly did you find the handkerchief? On the landing dock, sir. The one you arrived by. Pass me the handkerchief. But, but sir, my orders were to give it to my master. Are you refusing to give me my own mother's personal belongings? Even though she was greatly looking forward to meeting your master, she's gone missing. And you seem incapable of finding her. Oh, but sir, please. And to top it all off, you refuse to give me the handkerchief that she so often let me use? Do I deserve such little consideration in your eyes? Is that what you wish me to report to your master? No, certainly not, sir. Please forgive me, sir. I have been such an idiot. Here you are. It is indeed your handkerchief, Mother. He must have come here for a specific reason. I need to know what it is. Let's think. What could she have been doing out here on this wharf? There's no way I'm leaving without finding out about Mother. There's no way I'm leaving without finding out about Mother. Barrel's been broken for quite some time. I think this chest might belong to Duchess Hillsborough. Must be an incredible view from up there. Impossible to set foot on the island without being seen from 300 meters away.
like a bar from an old gate. This miserable old bar has been broken fairly recently. The edges are still clean, and the tip is blackened. Without analysis to the contrary, I put my money on cannon powder. This might just come in handy. A sack of seeds. It's unopened. No one seems to have used any. Honey, I couldn't have hoped for better. Some rope. Apparently no one's touched it for a good long time. Let's see what's hidden inside. Let's look. It's too badly written, I, I can't make out the address. Hmm, a letter written in an oriental language. I haven't the slightest idea what it says. Address is 50 Bedford Square, London. The address is in Sao Paulo, Brazil. That reminds me, it's about time the order sent some envoys there. Probably a Dutchman. This envelope is meant for the Vatican. Apparently this letter is meant for Pope Pius VI, born Giovanni Brasci. I wonder which one of these people is influential enough to write to the Pope in person. Samuel Ritter Dochoa. <laughs> Mother, you test me even when you're not here. It's an anagram of Louis Moras de Richet. You wanted to write to me then. Let's see what's inside this letter. So. Dear Samuel, my stay on Lord Mortimer's Island is going wonderfully well. As I find myself in such charming company, I plan to stay a few more weeks. Would you be so kind as to send me a gift that I'd like to give to our old friend Manuel Godoy? I would be most grateful. I have been told that he's going to join us here soon. I would like to mark the occasion. Thank you in advance. Yours devotedly, Sarah Faustine de Richet. What is your game here, Mother? What are these strange turns of phrase? I've never heard you speak like that. What's going on here? That you write to me under a pen name, okay. But here you go even further by trying to avoid raising any suspicions should anyone else read it. I wonder if this Godoy is the person you came looking for. Think. Godoy, Godoy, Manuel Godoy. Why does that name sound so familiar? I'm guessing he's a man of some importance. Spanish, I'd say. But just can't put a face to him. Well, hope we meet to talk about it soon, Mother. I don't know what you've gotten yourself into this time, but I'll bet you've got a lot to tell me. Latin inscription. And Nessis, mi fili quantilia produncia mundus regatur. You don't know, my son, how little wisdom the world is governed with. I tend to agree.
How did Mortimer manage to build his manor at the top of a rocky outcrop? Impressive. Ah, my son. I was looking for you. What can I do for you, Your Eminence? I wanted to ask you. You are the son of Sada de Riche, aren't you? You see, your mother and I were supposed to meet here on this very spot. I was supposed to hand her a very important envelope. But I haven't mm -hmm. seen her. If only Mother had told me why she was coming here. Anyway, I ought to take the envelope. It might have something to do with her disappearance. Listen, if it will help, you can always give it to me. Well, thank you, my son. I'll bear that in mind. I'd rather deal with her directly. Don't take it personally. Would you happen to know if your mother has arrived yet? Certainly, Your Eminence. Mother got here some time ago. I was hoping to find her when I arrived, but given the hour, she must be asleep by now. Right. I shall see her tomorrow, then. By the way, Your Eminence, I wasn't aware you knew my mother. Ah, if you only knew, my son, I hold your mother in the highest regard. She has rendered great service to the Church, and her help is invaluable. I hope that you will follow in her footsteps. If only she had told me where she was headed. Nonetheless, our exchanges have always been discreet, and I should like them to remain as such. If your mother wishes to speak to you about us one day, I will not mind if she does so. That is very commendable. But since we work together on a daily basis, it's, it's surely just an oversight. Most certain. You said you worked together. What do you do, exactly? Be it Mother or myself, our motto has always been discretion in all things, and to promise to never betray a word of honor. Was your secret safe with Mother? It will be even more so with me. You have convinced me. The mystery with which your mother manages her business proves that she carries your motto close to her heart. Your words seem sincere, my son. All the same, it bothers me to see you in a quandary, Your Eminence. Is there any other solution? Look, if it's of any help, you can always leave your envelope with me and I'll give it to her as soon as I see her. Uh, I hesitate. Up till now, we have always dealt with her in person, and that has always been successful. Do you think I should give it to you? Look, you seem hesitant. The simplest thing to do is just to give it to her when you see her. After all, it's not that urgent. Yes. I mean, yes, it's urgent. I mean, what if we don't find each other here on the island? Though I don't know yet when I'll be leaving. I might not be staying for very long. Hmm, what to do? Can you see a solution? Come on. Just give me the letter for crying out loud. I cannot run the risk alone. I am going to trust you. You seem like an honest man. Bingo! Listen to me, my child. If I give you the letter, can you promise me before God that no one other than your mother will read it?
Your Eminence, that's just not possible for me. Why is that? I've always had a Cartesian mind, and I won't make false promises. I respect you too much for that. I spend my time trying to find logical and reasonable answers to problems which, at first glance, may seem supernatural. I'm not saying I don't believe in God as a concept, I just don't believe in the God of your sacred texts. And I don't want to lie to you. Even though your answer does shock me, my son, I shall only hear your honesty. Listen, let's stop there. I'm going to tell you a secret, Monsieur de Riche. Your mother and I are organizing the escape of a large number of French priests who face a massacre organized by the accursed Republican tribunals. The church is literally being bled like a beast. Without your mother, hundreds of men of the cloth would have gone to the guillotine. She has made the services of your order available to us by organizing the priests' safe passage across the borders. Even if she does not share all our convictions, she always provided assistance. Young man, you can be proud to be her son. Be it only for her sake. Always respect your name. Here, the letter I spoke of. It includes a list of about 15 names ready for departure. Be quick. Remember to tell Sarah when you see her. That time is short. Well played. I'll decide later when I'm alone whether to look at what it contains.